going to discuss lecture seven, where we will be discussing a very important aspect of accelerators, that is beam focusing. And uh, this uh, uh, beam focusing is required for all the experiments. And uh, you can see that uh, the beam extracted from iron source or even accelerated from uh, uh, from accelerating tube normally is diverging. For example, if you take the iron source here, there is a plasma here and there is a extraction voltage, then the beam will be going almost like this because beam is coming from all places. So it will be a very diverging beam. Now this beam has to be focused before it is taken to the to the uh, target. Otherwise, what will happen if, if the beam size is big and target is small, then the entire beam will not be used and the results will not be accurate. Therefore, it is absolutely necessary that before taking the beam, accelerated beam to the target, it has to be properly focused. And it will always be preferred if the beam is parallel when it is going to the, to the uh, target. It, if it is a parallel beam, then it will be preferred. However, uh, this has been done in the case of, for example, uh, light beams. It is done with the glass lenses. And in the case of uh, uh, electrostatic lenses, uh, ion beam which are accelerated, electrostatic lenses or the magnetic lenses are normally used for getting the beam focused. And normally the target size is not more than the few millimeters to one centimeter and therefore beam has to be focused to that. Then you will see that both electrostatic and magnetic lenses are used. And in fact, uh, even the dipole magnet, which we always think that dipole magnets are used only for deflecting the beam. If they are given, their pole faces are given the proper shape in order to get the magnetic field uh, components energized, then uh, they also can be used for focusing the beam. But otherwise, normally electrostatic lenses, either electrostatic quadrupole or maybe angel lens and the magnetic quadrupole lenses are very popular for focusing the beam. Then you will see that if you are using uh, the, these uh, doublets, that means uh, two quadrupoles, either electrostatic or uh, magnetic, then you will see that one quadrupole always focuses in the one plane and it defocuses in the other plane. And therefore, if you want to have the uh, focusing in both the planes, then the, you have to use doublet, minimum doublet. Or if you want to have the symmetrical symmetry of the beam, total rotational symmetry, then it is uh, required to use a triplet rather than the doublet. And these details you will see that uh, uh, these quadrupoles are uh, useful uh, and for both low as well as high energies. However, for very low energies, uh, another simple lens, which is called angel lens, which requires only one voltage uh, and other two are uh, grounded normally, but it's not necessary that they should be grounded and they can be used. Uh, so uh, there are advantages and uh, disadvantages. If you use magnetic quarter poles, then you will find that this uh, focusing is mass dependent or the velocity dependent. However, in the case of uh, electrostatic quarter poles, this, uh, the magnetic field uh, or the electrostatic field strength does not depend on velocity and it only depends on the charge and therefore they are much more convenient to use. However, at low energies, always electrostatic quadrupoles are preferred because they are supposed to be stronger than the magnetic uh, quadrupoles. Uh, uh, the, and uh, of course, the velocity independent, therefore more convenient to use it. At high energies, uh, these electrostatic quadrupoles cannot be used because the, uh, uh, the voltage which is required to focus these beams has to be of the order of the, of the, order of the energy. So suppose you want to uh, focus the uh, some 50 keV beam, then the electrode will require voltage of the order of 50 keV. And therefore at high energies, 
the magnetic water poles are preferred and they are the much better with uh, those limitations of uh, mass dependent and therefore the current which has to pass to generate the magnetic field has to keep varying with the mass and the velocity. You can see here there is a uh, beautiful analogy between the optical uh, uh, lenses and the electrostatic lenses you can see here. Uh, here you can see the electrostatic quarter pole. All these electrostatic or magnetic quarter poles they have four poles and for example in electrostatic it is called positive positive and negative negative so there are four poles and these are uh, these are uh, equipotential lines so you apply the voltage here let's say it is V here and uh, any voltage either it can be grounded or it can be more or less say. now if you see the analogy, analogy then uh, let us take a glass lens which is converging type here and uh, all the beams, all the particles here at different distances from the optic axis at the distance of D at various Ds will be focused here at the same point because the curvature changes. So the beam which is uh, coming very close to the axis will go almost like parallel. But the beam which is coming very or hitting the lens at uh, larger Ds will have much larger uh, uh, deflection angles. So it is that uh, theta depends on the d, the distance from the optical axis to the place where the beam is hitting the lens. So you can write, if you write this, then it is almost like uh, you can say the tangent of this theta uh, is equal to d by f. If f is the focal length, which is here to here, this is focal length. And uh, so you can say that the and if the theta is a small, then you can write in a simple expression it is dyf for a small d's. So, uh, so if the uh, farther is the particle from the axis, the stronger is the focusing force, and the whole it depends linearly for the small uh, uh, distance d from the optic axis. Now, in electrostatic lenses. There are two types as I mentioned, one is called angel lens and other four, other one is called uh, quarter pole uh, lens, electrostatic quarter pole lens. And in uh, uh, quarter pole field configuration for this one is shown here, you can see uh, that the particle will be uh, uh, focused properly if the opposite poles are uh, of the similar polarity. Now in the case of uh, electrostatic quarter poles which is shown here that uh, this is plus V here both and this is minus V. The field uh, which is a function of an X and Y. Let's say that this is X, this is Y axis and this is X axis and here the Z axis is uh, normal to this which is a beam direction. In that case with following uh, 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 geometry, the field uh, or the voltage distribution which is a function of x and y depends on k by 2 into x square minus y square. This of course is uh, exact if the geometry of the poles is hyperbola and uh, then this equation will be used. And of course I am assuming here that beam is along z axis. The field alerts of course has to be minimized and they depend on the two factors mainly. One is, uh, one is the um, manufacturing and uh, that is the uh, accuracies and uh, so other one is the positioning accuracies when you are aligning the things. So if there is an error in the either manufacturing or the positioning of the quarter pole then there will be errors and which will disturb the ion trajectories always as the focusing effects of the quarter pole. These errors not only can change the focusing effects but also can change the motion of the ions and they can induce the aberrations which I have mentioned. This is the true, uh, this is true for both electrostatic as well as magnetic quarter poles. I have shown here the first one is an angel lens. You can see here this is angel lens and angel lens uh, all, uh, has three electrodes 
and normally uh, two electrodes which is uh, at the entrance at the exit they are uh, normally grounded they are part of the beam line and the center electrode is uh, given the voltage but it is not necessary that these other two should be grounded they can be isolated also and if you isolate then the voltage is will be v1 and uh, v1 in the beginning the first electrode and the B2 at the last electrode and the central electrode will have this. However, the voltage difference is uh, V minus V1 and uh, V minus V2 in the case of Q. And uh, you can see the field lines which are responsible for the focusing of this. So basically this angel lens also is a, uh, is a three electrode or they can be three cylinders. Uh, and uh, these cylinders are applied voltage and as I mentioned that normally uh, these uh, uh, two electrodes, one is at the entrance and the other is at the, at the exit, they are grounded. So if, if suppose the beam line is coming here, then only central electrode is isolated and then these two are grounded, they are part of the, they are, they become the part of the beam line. So they are grounded and therefore you don't have to apply voltage. So this V1 and V2 becomes uh, V1 and V2 becomes zero. So V1 is equal to V2 and is equal to zero means it is grounded. It's a part of the uh, a part of the tube or part of the uh, beam line. Only and only this is applied the voltage V. You can see that how how this uh, works. You can see the field lines here. And at any point, for example, here, there will be a force in this direction. And this will have two components, one in this direction and other one. One is this, one is other one is this. And similarly here, there are two components and they will be, they will be responsible for focusing the beam. You can see here that the, if one is focusing, the other one will be defocusing because the field direction will be reversed. And therefore, if first one is focusing or defocusing in this case, then this will be focusing. So, uh, there it will work like this. But the total focal length will be positive. That means there will be net effect of uh, this lens will be the focusing. Now, uh, coming back to, so this is a very simple, uh, but only problem is that this uh, V, the voltage which you have to, even if you V1 is equal to V2 is equal to 0 means they are grounded. You have to apply voltage on central electrode which is uh, V and uh, that uh, voltage has to be pretty high if you want to go to higher energies. And therefore these lenses are mainly used uh, for lower energies but they are very accurate, very simple, very cost effective and they are in general used for low energy accelerators and very effectively focus the beam. However, this is the quadrupole uh, lens, electrostatic lens, and uh, this again, like magnetic lens, which I will explain later, will focus in one plane and defocus in another one. So they always have to be used in trip, uh, doublet and minimum doublet. And, and if you want a cylindrical symmetry then of the beam, then it has to be, you have to have a symmetrical triplet. Now in this case you will see that uh, if first quarter pole is uh, focusing in X plane and defocusing in Y plane, then the, the second quarter pole which is rotated by 90 degree will defocus in X plane and focus in Y plane. So that effective uh, focal length will be positive and it will be effect will be net effect will be uh, uh, focusing the beam. So this you can see here that uh, as I mentioned earlier that the, both electrostatic and magnetic quarter poles they have four poles. Here uh, there it was positive positive negative negative. Here it is north north south south. So you can see that if a particle is going particle in all the calculations particle direction is always taken as z as uh, mentioned, let's say this is Z, this is a beam axis, Z is always beam axis and uh, these are called transverse axis, this is called Y axis and this is X axis which is perpendicular. So if Y is like this, 
x is like this and z is like this. So these are three axes which you can see and at any point the magnetic field which is between north pole and south pole. So magnetic field will always be like this and from here to here and uh, this place to this place here for example here. So you can see that if a particle beam is slightly defocused and if a particle is falling on this point P then you will find that it will face, uh, it will see the magnetic, force, magnetic field B is it perpendicular to this and it will have two components Vy and Vx which are responsible for focusing and defocusing. So you will see if you can analyze which you will see in the next slide that it focuses in one plane and defocuses in one plane. And for uh, doing that, uh, uh, you will see with the analysis that uh, unless you use the quarterpole uh, doublets, you cannot get the focusing in both the planes. And uh, therefore, they are always used, these quarterpoles are always used either as a doublet or as a triplet. You can see I am giving the summary of this that uh, you saw that uh, this since the profile of the pole is hyperbolic, let's say, uh, in ideal case, then as we move along this axis, the magnetic field increases, uh, which is Vy here, uh, this is Vy and this is Vx. And so as x increases, the distance, this keeps coming down, this distance keeps coming down and therefore the Vy will keep. So we can always write that Vy is proportional to x here and therefore you can write uh, it is equal to g times x. Yes, so g is a constant of proportionality, it is nothing but a gradient. And similarly if you go to y axis side, then also you can write that Bx is proportional to y here as you go and uh, it is also again uh, like a g into y. Uh, this g is uh, proportionality constant here. Now the force on this particle coming here at this point will be written as fx. You can see here that how this uh, total force is both uh, is E charge times E plus V cross B and uh, B I said that uh, B is always along the Z axis. So Vz is really equal to V. Now in this case when we are focusing with the quadrupole, magnetic quadrupole, E is 0, so this point is 0, this point is 0, so this will not appear and therefore the force will be, force on the particle which will be responsible for focusing or defocusing is nothing but charge time B cross, it is a cross product of velocity and the magnetic field. Now these are all vector quantities, so you can write this. Uh, force as I F X plus J Y uh, J F Y uh, plus K into J Z uh, F Z. So these are three components and the right hand side you can write in the matrix form and if you expand the matrix form here then you can uh, write this equation and from this equation you can write F X is equal to charge times B Y V Z Vy, this is velocity and this is magnetic field and uh, as I, uh, I mentioned that we are assuming that velocity is uh, along the z axis. So this will be, this will be 0, this is 0, this is V, this will be V. So you can write that this is nothing but Vx is equal to minus charge times Vz, z component which is as I said that if the velocity is in this direction, this will be equal to V, if the V is the velocity, into the Y component of the magnetic field. And um, you can write similarly equation from this, you can write that it is Vy is there. Now you can see here, if you compare, Fx is minus this and Fy is plus this. So you can see that in one, for, in one case, x plane, if it is focusing in x plane, it will defocus in y plane 
and if it is focusing in y plane then it will defocus in plane and therefore it is necessary that uh, by proper choosing the parameters you can focus the beam in both the planes by rotating it because you have to change the direction you have, you have to change the sign of that so and you have minimum two uh, quarter poles one here and one here and this quarter pole is rotated by 90 degree so that the field directions will change and then it will give the uh, focusing in other plane where it was defocusing in the first quarter pole now ultimately aim having known this so this has to be calculated properly and uh, uh, of course in the quarter pole not only uh, the, you have to use four quarter poles if uh, if you are using magnetic quarter poles they can be close by between two quarter poles there has to be certain distance so you have to consider that also uh, they, there will be focusing if the first one is focusing in one plane then it will keep focusing there will be a drifting like of thing so you have to consider that also so ultimately what exactly we want we want that uh, we want to see how much is the focusing or defocusing and for that we have to do the uh, we have to uh, study the motion of the charged particle both in x and y plane x and y plane are transverse plane and this velocity is going in longitudinal so uh, uh, we have to see the, the, the direction uh, or motion of the particles in the field whether it is electrostatic or quarter magnetic in both the x and y plane so let us and they will be somewhat similar so you can say that if i study thoroughly uh, the motion of the charged particle in x plane it will be somewhat similar to that uh, in y plane also and uh, then you, it will uh, change when in the other quarter pole which is 90 degree rotated so you can write that uh, uh, if you want to study the motion of the uh, particle in x plane then the you will see that the force is uh, fx which is responsible and force is nothing but the derivative of uh, momentum that is dp by dt and this is nothing but uh, d by dt of mv which is the momentum and therefore you can write uh, this as uh, d by dt within bracket m into dx by dt because velocity in x plane is uh, dx by dt and this you can write as uh, m into d square x upon dt square this is a this is a uh, this is called acceleration it, uh, this is nothing but x double dot derivative of velocity so if you write all these things and the force coming from this equation here these equations here then you will find that our equation becomes like this this is the equation you take it to right uh, left hand side then this becomes the equation so this is the equation which we have to solve in x plane uh, x plane uh, x uh, so this you can so suppose you write this as let's say k and change the word see ultimately you want to know the uh, trajectories as a function of z because it is the velocity a particle is moving in z direction so you don't know time of course you can calculate velocity and but that is not important so what you want to know x as a function of z and y as a function of z these are the because that is the uh, transverse place so you want to uh, calculate the trajectories of particles in x plane x plane and which is as a function of uh, z in the x and y plane both of them so, so you have to convert, you have to change the variables from t to z here and you can write that z is nothing but velocity times the difference and that if you differentiate it is dz is equal to vz into dt and vz is nothing but velocity, is velocity, we are taking the particle is moving only in the z direction. So if you write this then the equation becomes, uh, this is the equation which you have to solve. Where if you write kx as uh, this uh, e times g upon mvz then this becomes the equation which you have to solve and this is a very simple equation which is have a, which will have a solution 
aware x, which is a function of z, you can see is, uh, this is written here, it's a very simple one. And if you differentiate it, then x prime becomes like this. This is the x prime. So these are the two equations you have to solve. First is that how the trajectory is moving as a function of z and how the divergence is increasing or decreasing. So you have to solve these equations uh, simultaneously, both of them, and see this. Now here you, uh, you can see that in this equation, these are there are two constant a and b and they have to be found from the boundary conditions and there. So effectively when we say focusing is solution of these two equations and uh, find out that uh, how the trajectory is uh, moving along z. So these are the uh, two equations which have. Now if you do that in a very simple terms and uh, this 1 by f is given here and which depends on g and where l is the length See, for example, uh, if you have a quadrupole here, let's say you have quadrupole here. Uh, normally, these quadrupole lenses, magnetic quadrupole lenses, they, they have a finite distance, let's say, finite uh, length here. So, this L is a length. While, while uh, you have seen in the case of uh, optic lenses, glass lenses, uh, they are also having two types of lens. One is thin lens and another is thick lens. So in the case of thin lens, you can neglect the thickness. Suppose it is, uh, let's say, in the case of converging lens, uh, it is a very thin lens, then you can forget about, you can uh, omit the uh, length. But if they are, uh, suppose this lens, this uh, uh, lens was very thick, then you cannot do that. See, similarly, in the case of electrostatic, either quarter, uh, electrostatic quadrupole or magnetic uh, quadrupole, this length cannot be avoided if it is not a thin lens. So if L is the thickness of the lens, then you can write the focal length here, which is focal length here, and that is a function of velocity, uh, not velocity, magnetic field, rho, which is a radius of curvature, length or the thickness of the quadrupole, and this G factor, which is coming from here. G, you can see that G is coming from here. Uh, that's a gradient of the magnetic field. If you put that simply, uh, then uh, you can see here that uh, 1 upon FL is K times this and these are two, both are constants. And here the K is called uh, the focusing strength. And at this moment, I would like to uh, again tell you that if you have two lenses, it's not that it will give defocusing beam. One way if one is focusing and other one is defocusing. So suppose you have a combination of two lenses. You have a combination of two lenses, then if a net effect will be focusing. So suppose either you have focusing and defocusing, or you have defocusing earlier, defocusing earlier and the uh, defocusing here like this and the focusing later on is still the effect will be and that you can put uh, still it will be focusing effect only and therefore if the beam is coming here at let's say at let's say two centimeter let's i'm just putting it then you will get the beam here focused at certain distance and it will be much smaller, it will cross at this. So there will be some focal length and uh, that focal length will be equal to Fc which is called combined focal length and that is equal to 1 by F1. F1 is a focal length of the first lens uh, plus the 1 by F2, F2 is a focal length of second lens minus the D and D is the distance between these two, D is uh, focal D is the distance gap between two lenses. So if you put that, you can put uh, uh, any one of them, either F1, you can put negative, that means defocusing, or uh, you can put positive and the other one, other way around. If you put either of them, you will find that it is always the combined effect. The combined effect is always positive. And therefore, any, any, combination of lenses, either focusing, focusing lenses or converging, converging, 
or converging, uh, diverging, or diverging focusing, or any combinations you have, this F C combined focal length will always be positive, and therefore the net 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 effect of this focal this will be this will be net effect will be focusing. So this is just to give you uh, an idea. And here I have given some idea about the about the how the uh, uh, the arithmetic mathematics works and uh, how the uh, trajectories can be calculated. And similarly, you can do in y plane also. And uh, if you do this whole thing, uh, uh, the trajectory calculation and see that how the focal lengths in x plane and y plane looks like. Then you see that uh, uh, these focal lengths are given here, x plane and y plane both, and uh, uh, you have a focal length here, and the trajectory will be. Uh, when you want to calculate the trajectory, then you have to inject a parallel beam here, and then see that at what point they will be. Of course, they can be aberration if the proper uh, proper uh, 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 machining of these lenses is not done. Here it is deflected. So here you can see the parallel beam coming here is focusing at this plane, and uh, here in this case it is diverging. The, uh, it's a diverging lens, so the trajectory is going like this. So it, it will be crossing the optical axis at a point uh, opposite to that. So this becomes uh, like minus f. So this this is direction. So that is why I said that. Uh, and normally, in the case, if you want to have a good quality beam uh, image, then the, this focusing and defocusing focal, uh, focal lengths in magnitude are uh, are equal. They are kept equal. The de design is done in such a way that they are equal, and these are almost uh, identical. And therefore, you can get a see idea of uh, in any experiment. Idea is that you should have a, a smallest beam possible. And as far as possible, it should be very close to the circular beam. And that you can have circular beam if uh, if if uh, the instead of uh, doublet use if you use triplet and analyze the whole thing in the same manner using the same uh, philosophy which I explained just now, then you will find that with triplet you can get a very symmetrical beam, rotation, rotational symmetry. You will get it. And the aberrations will be very small.